Next up is Purdue's Matt Painter. Of course, the Big the Ten NCAA champs tournament. last year. They are picked as a preseason number two favorite this year. Go ahead and start with an opening statement, then open up the questions. Um, thank you. Um, we um, uh, obviously we had a really good summer this year. I think that's probably the one thing for us that was great. Losing such a quality player um, in Caleb Swanigan for us to be able to represent the USA in the World University Games and get a lot of practices in and play a lot of quality opponents in Taiwan. Um, I think has really helped us as practice has started. So just uh, obviously looking forward to the season. I think we have a lot of guys that can um, really shoot the basketball and play and have a lot of experience. And then I think we've had um, been very beneficial to have a lot of big guys. Uh, but with that being said, I think Isaac Haas um, has been a guy who's never been the go-to guy for us down low since we've had A.J. Hammonds, we've had Caleb Swan again, and I think, you know, for him to have a, a breakout year for us this year would really help to go along with the versatile all-conference guy like Vince Edwards, a guy like Dakota Mathias, who's, to me, is an all-conference player just with his value on both ends of the court, and then the leadership of P.J. Thompson with the best assist turnover ratio in the history of our school. So it's a great place to start. Carson Edwards played on two USA teams this summer and had a lot of experience there. Ryan Klein started for us last year. And then we have some guys, um, you know, that give us depth, freshmen, and a couple of experienced guys that, um, you know, really played well on our trip. So uh, we're excited for the season. And um, I think our, our ability to shoot is probably the number one thing that jumps out. Um, so, but we're going to have to be able to, to compete on both ends um, if we're going to be in a good position at the end of February. Thank you, Coach. We're going to start with a question in the back left corner of the room. Last row. Uh, Nathan Baird, Lafayette Journal and Career. Uh, why were you such an advocate for the protected in-state rivalries beyond what it means for Purdue, I guess, just what it means for the conference overall? Right. Well, I, you know, obviously when it comes to a rivalry, you're thinking about yourself. You know, do, do I think it's good for our conference? Yes, but I think it's more beneficial to Indiana and Purdue when I'm thinking about that and our fans. You know, the, the fans want to see that in our state. Um, both schools want to see that. Our players want to see it. You can go. It's a long list of people um, that it benefits um, in the state of Indiana. But uh, I think within conferences, I think rivalries like that that have been going on for a long time, I think those are very good, not just our rivalry, but Michigan, Michigan States, and uh, some other people. And so it's just one of those things where, you know, when you you see your fans and they, they talk about it, it, it makes no sense to them why you're not playing twice a year. And you can sit there and talk about an unbalanced schedule. You can talk about 14 teams. That doesn't make sense to them. You know, they just want to see Indiana and Purdue play at least twice a year and hopefully connect in the Big Ten tournament because I think, you know, I think we share, I think Purdue people share the same thoughts about that as Indiana people do. We finally found something we agreed upon. Um, but um, so, so hopefully that's the case and we can continue to do that here on out. Coach, right-hand side, second row from the left. Hey, Coach, Ralph Russo with the Associated Press. You mentioned how the rivalries, a lot of it, you think, a little selfishly, how that benefits. Right. What about coming here? You know, you've been a lot of spent a lot of time at Purdue and a lot of time playing Big Ten tournaments in the, the Midwest. Right. What does it mean to Purdue and to you to come here? Well, I think for us, it's uh, you know the Big Ten originally is a, is a Midwestern league, and now it's not. You know, we 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 moved with the, the additions of other schools on the East Coast, and you got to come here. And you just can't have people in your league, and then like the only time you come here is when you play you know, at Maryland or at Rutgers or at Penn State. And so I was playing when Penn State joined, um, you know, the Big Ten. You have to be able to, to be visible and, and obviously being able to come here and, and, and play the tournament here is, is the right thing to do. It's the right thing for, for those schools, but it's also the right thing for our conference. So, you know, we're excited about it. And, you know, the ability to play in venues such as this, um, you know, it's pretty cool. Our guys get excited about it. They don't, they don't take a step back and say, hey, I wish I was – in India, I wish I was in Chicago. They're, they get excited about playing. You know, we, we were excited about playing last year. You know, it's a basketball game, and you know, we don't set the rules. You know, but we go by them. But I, I, I do think it's the right thing to do. Let's go stay in the back right corner on the aisle. 
Matt, Tim Fisher with Learfield. It goes back a little ways, but you had experience at Southern Illinois where you had that week off in between the conference tournament and then the NCAA tournament with the Big Ten making that change this year. Your thoughts on just the difference right. between those two? Yeah, well, obviously it's something you have to adjust to, but I don't think it's anything, you know, huge. It's not a huge adjustment. You know, obviously you're... You're going to have that week off, and hopefully it's that week off where you, you know, you feel comfortable about getting into the NCAA tournament. Obviously, when you have the, the week off more at that level, at Southern Illinois, we went six straight years, counting Coach Weber's two years. Um, my one year as a head coach, then Chris Lowry as the head coach for three years. And so when you look at that and you're helping build a program as an assistant, you know, you, but people don't realize those six years, they got five at larges, And so you wait in that week to see, you know, are we getting in? And if you feel good about it and you're right there on the bubble, um, you, you still get nervous as, as teams start to get beat and everything. So I think that's probably the only thing that's that's really different. People always talk about that week. Um, but it, it's basketball. You recruit these guys, and they play a lot of basketball. You know, they'll play three games in one day. And so, like, we never play three games in one day, you know, anymore. And so, like, they're not the same quality of games that they're playing in college. But it's still... You know, these guys grow up playing. They play a lot of games. So for us to be able to condense some things and be able to finish our season a week earlier, I don't think it's that big a deal. It's something we had to do to get the venue. And so sometimes you have to do, you know, some things necessary and play some games in December. And But if it's not, the, to me, it's just a basketball game. It's not that big a deal. Right-hand side, second row in the middle. Mike DeFabo, CNHI. Matt, you have four seniors here. Just what do you think the value of that experience is going to be come the season? Well, I think we have a, you know, people always talk about experience, but I think what's more important than that is the experience of having success together. That's more important. A lot of people say, hey, we have a bunch of seniors. Yeah, but have you won with them? You know, we've gotten third in our league, their freshman and sophomore you know, year, and then obviously last year, um, you know, we were able to win the league. So they've had a lot of success um, together, and I think that's more important than anything. And so we're excited about, you know, playing this season. But, you know, we also know we lost a, a really good player. And he brought a lot of mental and physical toughness to our team. And so I think those guys are going to, you know, be able to have to have those qualities for us to be successful. And I think we have a great non-conference schedule to go along with playing at Maryland and Northwestern in December. So it's going to be a, um, it's going to be a challenge. So you, when, you, when you have those type of challenges, you know, you, you much rather have experienced players, especially talented ones like we have. Time for one final question for Coach. Let's go third row on the aisle, right-hand side. Mike Pegger from uh, Peaks.com. Through your uh, basketball experiences, have you seen foreign tours make a difference with teams? Right. And you ever worried that it might tire you out eventually right. uh, as you go on? I, I think the foreign tours that everybody traditionally goes on are the 10 practices. Then you play four or five games. The, the thing that... I really like about those trips is the bonding and the guys being together. I like that piece of it. Um, I like the educational piece of it. You know, you go to Italy, you go to Spain. Um, I think that's good. But then the competition at that time is not great. A lot of people, a lot of us go on those trips in early August, and uh, it just isn't. So the, the, that's what's missing out of the equation. You would rather have, you know, you have 10 practices. I think what's good about it is your incoming guys now have a little bit of experience of being around the coaching staff, the terminology, the system. And so now when they do start at now the end of September, they got a little bit of a head start. Sure, they got two hours a week in those workouts, and that's really not that much. But um, I think that really benefits. But I don't think it, it wears you out. Guys play, you know, year-round, whether they're with you or not with you. Um, especially you get guys, I always say about the Big Ten, it's one of the best conferences in America. If you're able to get a scholarship there and you're able to work towards being a starter and you have a chance to be all conference, you should be thinking about being a pro. And a pro works on his game, a pro puts a lot of time in, and a pro is normally a 12-month guy. And so those are the things that you're really looking for. So in terms of burning out, the thing that we were worried about with our trip this year was different because you represent your country. So you don't have those limitations. You can practice as much as you want. So we're getting 25 to 30 practices, eight real games, two exhibition, which we played Canada, which was a good team. And then we had one scrimmage versus Norway. So we got 11 games, 30 practices this summer. And so that's different than the traditional one that we did the year before where we had the 10 practices and we went overseas and we didn't play, you know, great competition. But we all try to play the best competition we can 
on those trips, it's just really hard to do. But I don't believe in that. I don't believe in guys getting worn out, even though I didn't practice longer than two hours than any of my stuff, because that was my one thinking in my mind, like, you know, man, I'm, there's no way we're going to go and try to win this gold medal, and that's going to be our key goal when we get judged on what we do in March.